so many summers long ago I saw you hanging by the studio There was poetry in the way you stood There were reggaeton playing in the neighborhood Studios on the Lower East Side. It's on the horn with Andrew Einhorn. That's me. I'm standing up now. I'm gonna come sitting down. Woo! Hey everybody, what's cooking? How are you feeling? I feel great. It was like 72 American degrees today. It was a beautiful day. I took a bike ride. So this is our 15th show. Can you believe it? It just felt like it was 14 last week. Oh yeah, it was. Um, but this week, each week they get better and better. The audio gets better. My guests get better. The music gets better. The feelings get better. Plus we're closer to something called the election for president of the United States. Whew. You just have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know. You know, I feel like instead of wallowing in tension and anxiety, let's just sit back and realize that come January, it's probably gonna be a whole new thing. Let's get Orange Man out there. So look ahead, look forward to what's gonna happen and forget the in-between stuff. Just go out and motherfucking vote. Okay, thanks. Hey, I'm supposed to say, you know, sign up uh, Facebook, YouTube, like me, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it is October 21st. My guest today, a very special guest, we can call him Strange Magic, but his name is David Patillo. And I only met him recently through someone else as I've been doing of late. And um, yeah, rock and roll, blues, psychedelic. There's a lot of people describing what he did. So tonight's show, what I'm gonna do is, I've got actually three pre-recorded segments that I did because David played at Marshall Stack on the Lower East Side a few days ago. Um, but before I do that, as I was getting ready to go over, a typical Andrew, like dog the cat, man in the street, I was on my way and I was like, I saw these people taking pictures of each other. So I just wanna to go to this really quick because it made me very happy. So hang on, I'm gonna share. Whoops, I always hey. do that. <laughs> that was you, but wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. God, it was so good for a second. All right. Application Chrome tab on the street. All right. Back. Hey. It's New York street scene. Portrait mode? Yeah. Woo, baby. Yes. Nice. Who is that? What are you doing? He's a photographer and uh, he takes videography. Yeah. What's going on right here? With well, that was our cousin's birthday party today. Yeah. We came to Hotel Chantel and we had fun. We had some <laughs> bottomless mimosa. So, who are you? <laughs> Ralph Cherry. I shoot music videos, weddings, and short films. Oh, hey. Uh huh. Yeah. Tu parles français? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Bonjour, Ralph. Je m'appelle André. Je prends de la photo aussi. Okay, okay, okay. Tell me about your outfit today. You got oh, Prada shoes? Yeah, I have Prada shoes with a Zao shirt and a Michael Kors shirt with a little, or similar one, a similar one, the Zara hat. You know, <laughs> it's a little, little, little. It's, it's a just, lot of names. Yeah, no, it is, but it's just kind of like a little plastic, not too flashy. And we have this little Louis Vuitton glasses. Okay. 
And you have to keep it classy with that little four. I got my watch. It's classy. You know, you're not too flashy, but you know what I'm saying? Ralph, you must be doing well then. I don't know. <laughs> I try, I try. But, you know, I like fashion, though. Like, I first see. of all, yeah, I like fashion. But oh, this is my wife. Oh, Hi, Sorry, Andre. Was, it's Andrew Einhorn. I do a show Hi, called Andrew. On the Horn every Wednesday on Facebook. Oh. So I'm going to film a band right now on Allen and Rivington. Thanks oh, for chatting. Oh, okay. Je parle français aussi? Oui, je parle français. On se dit tout pour Andre. Bonne nuit. Bye bye. <laughs> and just like that, I brought you in. Hey, Hello, look David. At that. What's going on, man? <laughs> You know, I'm sorry to put that up top, but it was just like that was before I was on my way to you. I'm saying I might have done something ahead of time to get my brain a little motivated. Oh, I but, mm. And I walked past those people and I went, I should go back and film and see what happens. So I don't know. I like timelines. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me where you are. This is a beautiful setting. Don't tell me this is your home. Yeah, it's my apartment, our apartment. Uh, uh huh. Where about? Painting where are you? In the background. She painted that. That's my son when he was like, five or seven or his fifth birthday or third i don't know five uh-huh how old Maybe is he now now he's 17 he's backing me up on the new single actually he's mr musician he's playing bass and drums on my new single isn't that crazy that's Co fantastic yeah, it's, for it's, some it's covid friendly for some reason i thought you had like a six-year-old i don't know why it was like i, I talked to you said oh it's like, i gotta go home to the kid or something like that <laughs> did Holy i say shit. that <laughs> nah, he might have. I don't understand though. If you're 32 and he's yeah. 17, like <laughs> what the fuck? Know, Jesus. Know. It's, you know, <laughs> it's a miracle in nature. Just one kid? Just one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about you? Oh, no. I got three. You have no, three? I'm kidding. No, I'm a solo guy. Look at me. Got you're the like, big apartment. I'm running around the world. Oh, only felines in your life? Yeah. Felines? You got no? <laughs> Canines? Felines? Well, felines? I got neither of those two. Gerbil? Every dog. No pets? Uh, no, no pets. Okay. But every dog in my building, I feel like is mine. I know them all. I say hi to them all. I stop dogs in the street. I need dogs. It's like a fix. But then yeah. it's like with people, I love them and then enough. And then I'm off back to myself. Again. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can relate. It sounds like an artist's life. It pretty much is. It really is. Mm. So as I said, so that was before uh, I went to you and then I, I shot a bunch of video. I really liked it. I just with my iPhone, yeah, it was but great. the audio is good. I got some, I think you'll, you'll like what I got because I asked a few of your fr friends what they thought of you and it's nice to get feedback. You never know what they're going to say. Christian may or may not have said something because it was uh, his birthday. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. And you played a happy birthday song. One of the things I loved is, you know, I feel <laughs> like you... You hear other artists will play happy birthday, but they all put their own spin on it. And you had your own. Uh... Oh, yeah. I spun it out. Yeah. Is that the first <laughs> time you've played happy birthday? No, I actually love that song. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I mean, it is a tr tremendous song, you know, when you think about it. I always thought it was oh, Irving yeah. Berlin who wrote it, but it, it was. It's just an old folk song that was a woman, I think, in the 20s, like uh, adapted the lyrics to it. It's, didn't know it's, yeah yeah it's not i thought oh it's Ir i used to say that all the time oh it's Irving berlin but no it's a great song yep so let's go back in time a little i always feel like i like to set the scene because you could be from st louis for all i know i don't know that much about you are you a That's native new yorker you my, yeah? my father my father actually is my father's from yeah uh just outside of mount Ver uh, mount vernon missouri is where he's from uh, mm -hmm. is, yeah it's more it's closer to uh uh springfield missouri sure heard of it yeah yeah so, so did you grow up there or here in new york no 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 i grew up uh i, I was born in the state of washington in olympia okay. and sure. my family moved to tacoma when i was uh, you know uh, maybe two or three and then mm -hmm. we we my father was an advertising guy he was like a madman you know in the uh -huh. 60s and uh, then we moved to uh, when I was about five, he got an offer to work for an ad agency uh, and, a, and, and a big contractor in Palm Beach. So we moved to Palm Beach when I was a little kid. Yeah. Wow. So I was always missing the sights and the smells of of uh, the Pacific Northwest. You know, I always kind of it was it was always in the back of my mind, I think, you know. Uh, I, yeah. I look at you and I just feel native New Yorker surely grew up. In <laughs> well, I've been here long like enough, that. you know. If, if we live how... through 9-11, we're all native New Yorkers. That's the way oh, I fucking A. Yeah. 
Yeah. I was going to ask about COVID versus 9-11, but that's, I'm supposed to keep it happy and light. Did your, so does, did this Missouri and the Northwest influence music at all in you? I mean, sometimes parents are in the arts, but it seems like your dad wasn't necessarily. Well, no, he was like, a, he was a copywriter and a creative guy. So, you know, he was, he was, that was his world. You know, he eventually became like, it became his own agency and he was a, you know, Svengali oh. producer, yeah. you know, the whole thing. And okay. uh, he was a brilliant guy, you know, he was a brilliant guy. He was, he was, I think he was, you know, challenged a lot by his own genius as we all are, you know, as, as creative people. But he, uh, yeah, it, it, growing up with him was, I used to work for him a lot, you know, cause he always had jobs and every Saturday mm -hmm. that's what I did. So I kind of got a really strong work ethic, I think as a yeah. kid. Um, uh -huh. And he paid me, you know, it wasn't slave labor, which was good. So I had a job, which was nice. Um, wow. But yeah, he was really creative. My mother was really into, they were, you know, they had a big hi-fi and they were into show tunes and they were into, we had a lot of soundtracks. I remember the hair soundtrack and Dr. Mm. Zhivago and a lot of, there was wow. a lot of Bossa Nova, that kind of stuff, you know, a lot of Jobim. There was uh, a lot of James Taylor and Carol King, a lot of 70s songwriter. I definitely grew up with a lot of that. Um, and that was, you know, like my, my life in Florida was kind of that. Then a lot of classic rock radio, you know, there was a lot of Zeppelin, a lot of Beatles, a lot of Stones, a, a lot of like 70s milk toast. Oh, yeah, there you go. Nice. You're you're like covering some of the things I want to talk about. I'm always curious, especially musicians uh, in their early life. Like you and I are probably similar age yeah, uh, yeah. and growing up. And I was going to ask you about the radio. I mean, we all grew oh, up with radio. Amazing, We're a big radio right? guy. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you grow up? Philadelphia. Oh, Philly. Uh, okay. Suburbs. Yeah. 93.3 WMMR and 94 oh, yeah. WYSB Classic Rock. My best friend Nick was from is from Philly, and he always used to yeah. like rave about MMR, how cool it was as a station. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. We had we had WSHE. She. Uh -huh. Yeah. That was that was, <laughs> that was a that was a hot one. And but you know, like Florida radio was not as uh, I don't think it was as progressive as the Northeast. Right. They yeah. pretty much played a lot of Foreigner and 38 Special. and Okay, not know, that there's anything wrong with it. Stroke Bay, a lot of Billy, what was his name? Billy Squire. Yeah, Billy Squire. Say you're a bit of a man, uh, you got to settle down. You can pull that off. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I love Billy Squire. He had yeah. some really, really good songs. He did. Wow. I, I heard he yeah. wore ladies' underwear, too. He liked ladies' underwear. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know. Who hasn't? I don't know. Wow. Yeah. We'll save it for the, that, save it for the Facebook you know what's, post. It's funny, you kind of said, like, don't ask me the influences, what everybody asks. So I was like, well, what can I <laughs> chat about? I'm going to do a rapid fire. What do you think of these people? And just be like, oh, bam, good. bam, 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 bam. And I was writing down. So, oh, cool. But I feel like we'll come to that in a second. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go right to my first segment because I really would like yeah. to get these in. So give me a second. I'm going to stop. I'm going to start. This is the beginning of me uh, arriving. <sighs> At your place, let's see. Pleased to meet you. Happy birthday, Marshall Stack. Woo. Just like that. Hey. Aww. Mm -hmm. So yeah. much production. You know, oh, that guy. Saturdays at Marshall Stack. We're bringing back some good music to New York City. Keeping it real. Keeping the performers doing their thing. Spreading the love in the East Village in New York City, man. How many of these people do you think you know? Uh, a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know, man. I don't know what I'm going to do. I never know what I'm going to do. Really? Yeah, you know, not really. Keep it groovy and, like, you know, keep the vibe tied. Have a good time. <laughs> Yeah. All right, just like that, we're in, we're out. I got two more, but that was a nice little like intro. That was nice. I, I almost didn't let you interview me there because I was like getting my shit together. I said, no fucking way. I need yeah, you to talk good. to me and get close. And yeah. you're like, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, you, got, you know, artists need directors. We need producers. We need people in, you know, that, that, that are going to encourage us and tell us, get in the light, you know, turn up your yeah. guitar. We yeah. Like that. Even though we're prima donnas, we still like people who care. Yeah. 
Wow. I think that's, I feel like the story of my life, because I love working with people, if they're models or musicians, I just want to take control and be like, I want people to be people, but it's almost like move them in a direction where they're comfortable, where you can get what you want, especially yeah. photography wise. But um, yeah, and people talking, I mean, interviews are like the core of my soul. I just love to interact with people. So tell me what you were playing there. It sounded like a, one of your more popular songs. Yeah. So the first song was uh, a brand new one that's going to come out. Uh, the, so the, the new single, Can't Remember to Forget You, that you played at the beginning, it just yep. dropped yesterday, October 20. Um, and uh, so that's a, a series of a bunch of new songs that we did in lockdown, my son and I. And um, Owen was backing me up on bass guitar and drums and I was playing guitar and I thought, hey, it sounds great. Let me let me lay it. Let's lay it down. And yeah. so it just kind of came together. And then so the first song that I was playing is called Dose of Love, which is written just feeling like all the feelings I've had during quarantine, you know, bringing things back to love and feeling good and and what's important in our lives and, and also, you know, stepping away from politics and stepping away from the, the you know, the, the fray. Um, uh, and the second song was Raised on Rock and Roll, which is kind of like the song that everybody knows me for. And uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, I wrote it back in uh, it came out on the Raised on Rock and Roll records from, I believe, 2016. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's on Spotify and uh, it's sort of a love letter to all my rock and roll influences, the ones that I could think of at the time when I wrote the song. <laughs> Which Harder, I'm not asking you but about. It's a, you know, it's, it's kind of a name checking <laughs> song, right? So it's, you know, I was born on the Rolling Stones, uh, Van Morrison's Domino, I was raised on, raised on rock and roll. Jimmy Page, uh -huh. my air guitar, Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, I was raised on, raised on rock and roll. So it just continues to list my influences in there. And, right, you know, oh good, so I don't need to ask the influences question. With well, everybody no, I mean, else. we can yeah. talk about that. I, I, it's <laughs> no, all good. All right. I mean, I love, you know, I, I, yeah. I was really, like I said, I was raised on all that kind of classic rock stuff. And, and, and of course, what my parents were playing in the house. But then when I first came to New York City, I was in Washington Square Park and we, I was sitting around uh, the, the fountain, you know, and, and there were so sure. many people. Yeah. And, and I, it, I just had a revelation. Why aren't these people all fighting? And, you know, <laughs> it's like, how are we all getting along, you know? And yeah. I think that kind of, at that point, I kind of discovered folk music, you know? I, oh, nice. It's, uh -huh. Yeah, it, it's a weird idea, but I think that's that was the impetus that got me, in, you know, into folk music. So I, I discovered Bob Dylan, and then I got into Woody, you know, because Woody inspired Bob, and then Lead Belly, and then I found the blues, and the, then that was mm. it, pretty much. When, yeah. when I figured out Lead Belly sang his way out of prison, I was done. I was like, <laughs> okay, this is cool, you know, and uh, for murder, no less, right? Um, yeah. But he had, a, yeah, um, he had a he had a good re relationship with the with the foreman or what do you call him, the guy at the prison, um, uh, the the warden. Sorry, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that got me into blues, and then you know, raised on rock and roll is a very bluesy song, obviously. So I kind of got into blues and. It mm -hmm. did a lot of producing and worked with a lot of people along the way as a as a producer. And then I got in. I started this band called the Dead Exes, which is a, a thrashy blues two piece. So that's a whole nother, you know, path you can go down. And those those two records were 10, 2010, 2011, did a bunch mm -hmm. of touring, opened for some different artists around the country, went to Europe, did some different things. And then Strange Magic grew out of that because I just wanted to grow from being like a two piece thrasher or blues. A lot of slime, yeah. or, you know, noisy. It's fun, but good songs, you know. Blues. You were talking to you were you were talking before about lyrics because you were staying away from politics, but you were writing about what's going on today. I think lyrics, maybe in a lot of people's mind, is like, what do people write about? I mean, Dylan was incredible as a songwriter, oh, yeah. and everybody's different, and maybe lyrics aren't as important. I'm a big Bruce Springsteen fan, and yeah. I fucking love his lyrics. Yeah, you yeah. Know, with, romance and hot fire sweat night dark new york city conflict and it's like not that it yeah. resonates just i mean they're beautiful words yeah so when you he's what it, i mean he's a poet yeah do you like springsteen i you know i like born to run i really like that song particularly i mean i i grew up in florida something about springsteen didn't really resonate <laughs> with me for some reason but i think if you're yeah it didn't it didn't connect with me like some people like my wife is from new jersey she's from ridgewood new jersey and she right. loves bruce springsteen you know what i mean sure but like yeah. for me it wasn't it didn't connect with me as much i don't know but now i probably am closer 
stylistically to that. You know, I got the big mm -hmm. man on sax. He's not so big, yeah. but he's, he's tall. <laughs> he's tall, but he's not round, you know, Jeff Burke. Yeah. Um, Had, did but, you uh, go back? Have you heard uh, greetings from Asbury Park or Wild Innocent East Street Shuffle? Because earlier stuff is even more bluesy. There's piano. There's obviously the sax, uh, even yeah. violin. It's a yeah. nice mesh. Yeah. One of the first songs that, that I actually found out with Springsteen was uh, Prove It All Night. And all right. When, okay. okay. So, but dig this. Here's the cool story yeah. that nobody knows is that um, my sister went to University of Florida and I was like two years younger than her. So she invited me up to come check out University of Florida in Gainesville, which is like where Gainesville Green is from, like, you know, a lot of that. But it's a great, it's a great school. And a bunch of my friends graduated from there. Um, but I went to a frat party and there was an, a new wave band playing. And at that time, this was probably, uh, you know, like 81, maybe, maybe 80. Okay. And yeah. um, so there was a band and it was the they were playing a frat party and it was huge. It was a huge frat party outdoors, no mask, you know, um, but the, there was <laughs> there was a big stage. There was a big stage. And uh, yeah. And uh, uh, it was it. This band kicked into this song, and the, the, it was punk. But he was going, "Prove it all night, prove it all night." And he was this really cool-looking, jagged, <laughs> great jawline, you know, punky, cool guy that everybody was like, "Oh, this guy's." I think his name was Gordon. I don't remember. But anyway, that's how I got introduced to Springsteen, and then I was like, "That's a okay. great song." I always wondered what that's. It took me forever to find out what the song was. I thought it was wow. an original of theirs, you know. And, yeah. So, you know, Go back in time a little. Look at some of the wild, the innocent in Asbury Park songs yeah. like "Growing Up," "Saint in the City." They're just, uh, I just yeah. think they're fantastic. Yeah, an and a lot of people person. don't know. A lot of people started with "Born to Run" and then "Born in the right. USA." And "Born in the right. USA" no, is a great yeah. album. And then but. that's what spoiled it for me was the "Born in the USA," and then Reagan was like, "Oh, you know that." Then it got equated to Reaganomics, which for him, for, for right. Bruce, he was like, "Dude, that was not." Born in the USA, right? But it got right. adopted into that, you know, culture. Of course. And so that, yeah. I, that for me, I was like, eh, I'm out. You know, I was into punk rock. But right. my guitar, my Les Paul, is yeah. from Asbury Park. Oh, very yeah. nice. So, so I know that you. <laughs> Sorry, we're in New York City. Hey. Yeah. It'll it'll come to you and then come to me. Where where are in the city? We don't have to get exact, but are you East Village, Lower yeah, East Yeah, East Village. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, We're, all there. right, near Tompkins Square Park? Second and B, actually. Yeah. I fucking love second and B. I almost moved to third and B once. Really? Right yeah. There was like when I when I was moving from the West Village, I remember there was a place on a corner and it was like I would have had to sublet it. it. It was like three rooms, but it was on the second floor. I can't remember what's there now, but no, nah, I ended up I, coming to that alley. We may be coming back to those days now. You know, all the scaredy cats from COVID ran out of town. So now there's plenty of real estate deals popping up, you know. Yeah. My friends that are like real estate agents, they're like, oh, my God. It's like it's it's dropped dramatically, you know, like. Wow. Larger, yeah, you know, two, three bedrooms and stuff are like, ooh, way down. So your dream may still come true, you know. But it looks like yeah. you got a you got a pad over there. You got it. Yeah, and I'm just in one little section. It's it's pretty big. I'm lucky. I'm actually a homeowner. I currently have oh, that's uh, great. uh I won't say it's a three bedroom, two bathroom, but so, anyway. Fancy. Where where are you? Uh I'm down lower lower east side, Grand Street near the donut plant, oh, Essex. Yeah. Oh, that nice. donut place. People yeah, stand in I literally, line. yeah, I'm right below it. Yeah, pe it's nice because people come over, they bring me donuts. I don't get them myself, but yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. So, um, my mother said, make sure he plays the song not too late, and we're 22 oh, okay. after. So we don't have to do. Why don't we save? Can't remember to forget you. Is there something else you want to do just to do, yeah, jam yeah. and then we'll play some? Yeah, I'd love it. <sighs> Maybe I'll do Raised on Rock and Roll for you. How's that? Sure. Hey. I was born on the Rolling Stones. Fam was his domino. I was raised on. Yeah, it is on rock and roll. 
Jimmy Page, Jimmy, a guitar. Ziggy Stardust and the Spartans from Mars. I was raised on, raised on rock and roll. I left the city for the Mississippi blue. I left the job for the blue suede shoes. I was raised on, raised on rock and roll. Fly like an eagle, nobody hold me down. I play my 12 bar blues from town to town. Yeah, I was raised on, raised on rock and roll. Revolution and the two of us. Yeah, Lucy in the sky and the walrus. The sign of the time in November rain. Southern man and the hurricane. Southern man and the hurricane. I sit in a I was raised on rock and roll. Yeah, come on. Lovers rise like a top how we will rest on there is no rock and roll. Nobody ever gonna hold us down. We gotta go on up to this time. We will rest on rest on rock and roll. Revolution and the two of us. Oh, Lucy in the sky and the walrus. Yeah, sign of the time and November rain. So the man in the hurricane. So the man in the hurricane. I said, now, ooh, 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 ooh. I said, ooh, 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 ooh. I was raised on, raised on rock and roll. And the fluctuations. I was like, it was just soothing my soul. That was oh, really, good. really nice. Yeah. That's what it's supposed sure to be. Right? We, Thank uh, you. Are we Not recording like that? that. Did we record it? I don't know. I think it's on are Facebook. Are we recording that? Uh, oh, yeah. It's right. I mean, the sound was just is incredible. Maybe because, oh, um, well, I've been listening to your music online, and then there was the, the, the Marshall Stack gig, but that was just so incredibly clean. Wow. Intimate. And I was picking, I was. Intimate. I was listening to the lyrics. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Was there a Steve Miller band in there? There was a Fly Like an Eagle? <laughs> yeah, Fly Like, fly an, like an Eagle, nobody hold me down. I okay. play my, my, my 12-bar blues from town to town. Yeah. Okay. What's in there? Wow. Did I forget? I think I might have skipped a verse. I don't really remember. That's a, you that's know, people okay. are like, what did you play on that? Thing? You know, I don't really remember. Yeah, that's all right. I was, I've never I been was, one of those artists that like rehearses a, a story, which would be good. You know, it's probably smart. To rehearse yeah. your stories. If you go on tour with people, they play. They tell the same story every night. But they yeah. get to laugh. You know, it's all about getting laughs. Like, <laughs> what do they say? Lay pipe, get laughs. Got to lay some pipe. Hey, when you play gigs, do you talk to the audience in between? Is there little verbal things? Because some people seem to have none, and some will just have little idle yeah. chit chat. Yeah. Uh, one time I got a. a it was very in the tip jar. I got uh, somebody wrote me like this crazy note. 
Yeah. But hopefully they're not watching that. But I mean, it was it was insane. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of like Be Here Now, you know, like Ram Dass, you know, his book where it's everything's like this intricate drawings and it was all messages on a bar napkin and recommendations that they they wanted me to do. And then I think on the back, it said something about, no, one of the things was like, talk to the audience more. Inter interspersed with all this, like, you're amazing. But it literally looked like Be Here Now. Do you know the book I'm talking about where he's Ram Dass is no. like went to India and like drew the whole thing and it's- had I don't, but it sounds problem. great. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a, beautiful. I can go get it in the other room. But um, yeah. yeah, so anyway, it's a bar napkin. Somewhere I still, I think I saved it. But they were like, yeah. talk to the audience more. And then somebody once told me, well, you got to talk to the audience more because my friend left because you didn't talk to the audience. Enough when I was wow. There. I personally like it. I mean, there's some concerts I've been to. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, next one. Da -da 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 -da. I don't yeah. know if it feels like a lack of. You don't have to say, well, Philadelphia, Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, but well, we definitely I, did I, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Springsteen will go into a. Right. <laughs> Springsteen will go into a long story, and other people might tell stories. Just a little something, maybe even yeah. reflecting yeah. Yeah. No, the it's time, good. the location. It is yeah. good. So I've gotten better at it, I think, maybe. You say you played, you toured Europe before, yeah. right? Was that with Strange Magic or, or that other uh, band? Or yeah, band? I've do well, a, bunch, a few different times. I um, uh, I was playing with a band in the in the nineties called Mer M E R, and we toured around Holland. We did like Holland, some Germany dates, Belgium, mm -hmm. uh, and then I went back and I uh, toured backing up an artist that I was producing. And then we did a similar kind of thing. And mm -hmm. uh, then I went back, did I go? I, 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 so as Strange Magic, I've played London, I've played Paris, I've mm. played uh, around Holland. Uh, yeah. yeah, we went, I guess it was what, last year, year before? Last year I did Holland, I did, uh, I did Paris, uh, yeah, Paris, London, bunch of towns in Holland, and then came back. And then I was supposed to do South of France, and then that kind mm -hmm. of fell through, but that turned into London. And then there was a whole nother thing developing, which of course COVID shut down. So give me a quick uh, feedback what it was like. I mean, I've toured filming some bands all around Spain, a little Europe. Uh, the venues tend to be, they can be different. The reaction you get, maybe in Spain, well, you didn't, oh, yeah. just been, otra, otra, when they want more <laughs> for encore. Nice. Okay. Hi, what places did you love to play and was the reaction different or was I, there anything different well, between I think, the states? you know, I loved them all. You know, I think it was, it was my, uh, my first time in London, which was amazing. And mm -hmm. just the, what I loved in London, I, it was a good show. It was fun, but I just love the city. You know, I love the energy yeah. of London. There's this powerful energy there. It's, um, I think it would draw, it's, it's why everybody's on drugs and drinking in London. Cause there's just such a fast energy there. You know, you're like, what? Huh? Oh, hello. Oh, I like the drug shot. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> I, was I, don't the, I don't have the two camera shoot going over here, man. I'm like, that's my cutaway camera. That's good. But I, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know you everybody know, was on drugs in London. Yeah, everybody was I met 60, was. 70? Really? Oh, what kind God, of drugs yeah. were they on? Uh, like, you know, Next designer. Coke, huh? Yeah, yeah. A combination God. of those things. Yeah. Mo mostly a designer. MDMA, a lot of that. Whippets. Sure. Whip uh huh. Whippets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, so I got the, uh, you know, a lot of that was floating around. I don't really do anything anymore, so I'm pretty boring. You know, I was, I was a bit uh, of a pothead, like when, uh, you know, like it's been 15 years for me on anything. Wow. So, um, okay. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I still have a, a, a beer and, the, and a glass of wine. Um, yeah. But the, uh, but yeah, the, um, what, what really got me was Paris. I got to say, I don't know. It was just the people in Paris were, amazing and i had I, it's always your expectation right so if you come in sure. you're like i got no expectations right if you know if you right. come in with no expectations then your expectations are, are they're so you know they're 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 they're, they're paid out tenfold right you know so in paris right. i really didn't know i was excited to play there but i really didn't know how people i didn't think it was a rock and roll town and it was yeah. right after the uh, death of johnny halliday so people were like you know, like rock and roll was on everybody's mind. Like, yeah, we're gonna, you wow. know, Johnny Holiday, man, Johnny Holiday, you remind me of Johnny Holiday. 
<laughs> you know? Wait, so, did you do this a French accent you did a minute ago? Because it sounded oh, like man. Montreal, a bit French Canadian. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. My favorite, one of my favorite top three albums, I'm going, dating myself, uh, uh, Genesis, but way, way, way back, they had an album called Seconds Out, and it's yeah. live from Paris. Do you know this one? Uh, of course, yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I've yeah. Long ballad cinema show and dance on a volcano. And I just think they're great musicians, yeah. but I love how they wait and the song ends. Dun, dun, dun. There's a beat. <sighs> There's like a yeah, beat. They yeah, yeah, wait. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. was very, very you know, classy the way they did this. So I don't know. <laughs> totally. Wow. I got to brag for a second. You were talking about London, and it's funny. On my list that I'm going to ask you about these people is um, I went to see. Buddy Guy and Junior Wells, blues oh guys. Oh my Not, God, I love Junior Wells. Are you kidding? I don't even know if I knew who they were, but I went to the small club uh, called Dingwalls. It's kind of famous. Yeah, in yeah. Camden. yeah. Yeah, Camden Town. Yeah, Dingwalls. Yeah. They, they're changing the name of it, apparently, to something else. Oh. Everybody's like, oh, it's a sacrilege. Dingwalls. Yeah. It's like, and you know what else is that, like, if you ever watch Peaky Blinders, they do a lot of shots in, 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 uh, in like they'll they'll go to they'll go to London and they'll go to Camden and they, they, okay. you'll see the bridge but they have it rebuilt in the way that it was back then but it's that you kind of right. see I think you see that particular yeah. lock you know where the lock Camden lock is there and the whole thing so that's cool sure. man how is yeah, Junior Wells? Came, okay, I don't remember. Buddy guy's amazing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I was. You sure it wasn't Amsterdam? Years old and and I don't know, but guess who came on? Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring out a friend of mine, Mr. Eric Clapton. So wow. Eric Clapton came on stage, and the crowd thrusted forward, and yeah, it was just oh blues, God. and it was yeah. really nice. Yeah. All right, let's take a thing, and let's go back to another one. We got two more to do, so I'm going to add, because this is good. This is people talking about you and what they think of you, which is always fun. Oh, right, hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, is this happy birthday? No, wait, Marshall <laughs> Stack, we did New York Street Stream Yard. Pleased to meet you. I think it's happy birthday. Hope you guess my name. I think if not, then oh well. If not, yeah, we'll say happy birthday. Oh, here we go. Oh, what's she saying? Can you hear it? I can't hear it. Ah. Oh, yeah. Roll it back. Roll it back, people. Okay. Yeah. I might have forgot to check something. Hit that Dang. little volume thing, jiggy. There is a... Uh, a volume okay. thing. Okay, we got it. We, we want to see uh, it. Yeah, of course. It's I coming. don't get to see these kind of things very often. This is nice. Yeah. Okay. Good thing you didn't interview my friends. They would have really... There might be. I think there is... Uh... Yeah, what's that guy? Ah, oh, share audio. Come on, StreamYard. Just do that by... Woo! I know. Okay. That's you, by the way, David hey. Patillo. I've uh, done some shows with him where he's a guest singer, and I'm a guest singer. Wow. And he's an awesome singer. He's amazing. Yeah, he's got a very, like, 60s, uh, Dorsey, blues kind of mixed feel. Uh, the first time I met him, we were probably doing some Walter Lure thing at Barry Electric, and I thought he looked like Elton John with the big rim glasses. Psychedelic, <laughs> blues, Rolling Stones, mixed with the Verve, mixed with U2, a lot of a lot of influences on his sleeve for sure. Psychedelic blues rock. <laughs> I love David. Strange magic. Oh. Strange and the magic. <laughs> 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 There's Sean Spotter. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> that was great. Oh, yeah. Thanks for doing I mean, that, man. That's so sweet. Sure. Yeah. I feel I helped to tell the story, you know. Um, what you're like, obviously, there's in the studio in your home, and then there's out and about Marshall Stack. I'm sure it's different. Maybe one day I'll film you out and about doing a gig somewhere else. Yeah, you know? that's so. Uh, that was that was key. I mean, you 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 came in on the clutch maneuver there, man. I didn't think I didn't you know I didn't have any idea what you were doing. 
Yeah, but nobody it's better that way, right? Yeah. I, and right. those, those answers that kind of blew me away because I'm not, I'm, I have to, like, well, I have to tag some people now, which is good. <laughs> reshare, yeah. reshare, reshare. Yeah. So I have two options I could talk about. I mean, you are pretty damn prolific. I was looking in albums. I mean, there's at least five 2020, which is Raised on Rock and Roll, Channel T, Soul Crisis, Deep in the Shadows. Yeah. And this is all with Strange Magic and The Righteous, what was oh, it? The Righteous Wrongs. Yeah, yeah, excellent name. Did they, <laughs> that would be a lot. Strange well, Magic the, and The Righteous Wrongs? It, that's the pro, that's kind of the post, um, yeah. The, it, my uh, friend Craig from a band called Jeremy and the Harlequins and I were talking on the phone one day and, and we were hanging a lot in, in lockdown. Uh, yeah. Going to Tompkins Square and just hanging, talking about like philosophy and meditation and, you know, getting through this whole thing and also building our immunity yeah. through different supplements and also with meditation mm -hmm. and yoga and all these kind of things. Cause we're really into the immunity. And then, yeah. um, uh, um, Craig was like, we were talking about people and it was kind of a, it was a, it was, a, you know, there's this identity crisis happening in the, in the world. And then there's the, the, I think we were talking about maybe I per, it might have been identity. It might have been more of like a Trump thing. But 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 his comment was, you know, man, people are so righteous that they're actually wrong. And then, <laughs> so I said, that's it. The righteous wrongs. Craig's an honorary member, actually. He's he's too busy to be playing with us lately. But <laughs> Jeremy and the uh -huh. Harlequins, a great band. Check them out. Um, okay. They just record in a little Steven studio. So, mm -hmm. which I just found out he has a studio on Broadway um, from, oh, wow. from, from Springsteen. Hey, mm. another Springsteen tie-in. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, The Righteous Wrongs is actually my son, me, and mm -hmm. Jeff Burke on saxophone. Mm. Okay. Of, of, you know, for today. But I kind of like the name, so it might just stick for the band as well. The band's never had a proper name, like Sorry. Strange Magic and the Hula Hula. Hula. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, but... Some people are like, yo, strange, what's up? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> call me magic. <laughs> hey, by the way, what are you wearing? G tell us about your outfit. Oh, this is, uh, this is a stone shirt that I got from, you know, you know Andy Hilfiger? Have you ever met? Andy's a great no, guy. Tommy's, Tommy's brother. brother. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Tommy's brother. And he had a little place yeah. on, um, he, had a, he had CBGBs, which became John Barbados, right? Next door right. was CB's 313, or the, yep. we called it the gallery, right? So yeah. he was able, now it's a, a Panagonia surf shop, like whatever. So yeah. um, the um, they, uh, Andy Hilfiger had it for a while, and it was called Riff. And yeah. we did we did a, a Rolling Stones tribute show there, which obviously from the Bowery Electric thing, those guys were talking about. It's funny how uh, th that thing you meet so many people. Um, but I've I've done a couple of those tribute shows where they call me to be a singer, you know, and it's really fun, yeah. especially if it's Mick. It's it's easy for me, you know. A lot of Cyrus yeah. today, man. Are we getting are we in a hot spot here? What's going on? Evidently, goddamn hot spot. Um, yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hopefully shirt, okay. shirt, jacket. Send love out there. Send love. Uh, yeah. So I'm not quite as like designed out as the dude that you talked to on the street. My God, that guy was a he was a walking uh, hanger. Yeah. But the, yeah. So this shirt is is kind of cool. It's a stone shirt, That's and in great. Japanese it says, um, uh, "What does it say again?" It's the that the uh, Harlem Shuffle, and, and uh -huh. down here it says some, we got to get some Jap Japanese. Con Anybody Japanese speak Japanese on the? Yeah, Japanese. They, they put it in but the it's kind of like. Yeah. It's kind of like, hey, yeah, 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 or something like, yeah, 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 or something. And then it says okay. Harlem Shuffle. Harlem Shuffle. I can read it. I read Japanese. Yep. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. uh, beautiful. I was actually going to ask that. I was taking notes, and you said something. You're just dialect is kind of rock and roll. I don't know, man. I'm just playing, you know, what I feel. And I was thinking, I'm looking at what you're wearing. It's the... Rock and roll T-shirt underneath the thing. There's probably maybe a scarf. There's just yeah, the scarfs. You I, guys, I can't do the scarf anymore because I have to wear it every day. You know, so it's nice not to have the scarf. But yeah, yeah. But it's usually yeah. it seems like a rock T-shirt underneath a cool jacket. You even have? Do you have a, what's in here? I, yeah, a little, little pocket square. Little, 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 so that's great. Right, uh -huh. little little. You got you know, it's the little touches. You know. Yeah, but yeah. It's a little little 
we got a little a little sheen going on here, a little velvet. So you can walk down the street wherever it is and see something like that and be like, all right, there's a musician. And if there's three of them next to each other, it's like, well, there's the band. Yeah. And uh, I got no shoes on now, man. Got... Yeah, neither do I. That's yeah. okay. That's good. At least we got pants on. Yeah. Oh, you got pants on? Yeah. Oh, you got... I do have pants on. Oh, you got like capris. No, I just rolled them up. I don't know. Uh, my, no, I, don't, no, no, I like it. Keep them up. <laughs> okay. Don't let my fashion influence. <laughs> I got uh, my son got me back into baggy pants, though. I got to say, I got to give him credit for that. Everything got, comes got, around, right? 80s boot, were boot cut kind of cord things going on. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing I'm doing cords and velvet for the fall. That's it. I, that, I can't believe that guy you interviewed had so many brands on. How did people do that? I don't know. Yes, it was a little excessive, a of, but he was like, lot, yeah, but it's tempered. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm a well, I guess video was good. The wedding yeah. photography is good money. I get the feeling he was just from a wealthy family. I don't. Oh, okay. I hope I'm not insulting you, sir, out there. I just, uh, right, right, I don't right. know, because I looked him up. I was like, oh, let me look up his thing, okay. and I saw nothing. So, you know, that okay, whatever. that's good. All right. That's so this option. list, I want to get. Yeah. Yeah. This is um, since we're not asking about your influences, this is going to be like a rapid fire, not okay, so rapid like fire, it. but uh, let's see, if my, let's see how my synapses are doing. You already touched on like some of these people, but I wrote down some some are personal favorites. By the way, I'm just going to do. The other day, I'm listening to FUV, which you yeah. probably know, mm -hmm. this alternative station, yeah, and it, yeah. it's fabulous. For those of you yeah. out there in New York or maybe online, WFUV, it's like right. every couple hours, you get a different set list, different, it's old right. school right. Uh, radio, and yeah. you just discover, my friend Brian loves it. Uh, right. I mean, you can never stop discovering new music. I did a public access show years ago, and... Um, you know, I grew up on rock and roll like you, and all of a sudden I'm like looking into bluegrass and classical yeah. and then punk yeah. and then disco. And it's just, I, the more I, I was, the more, you know, Lester Flatt and Earl Struggs, Struggs yeah. and I realized the tempo of certain music at Blink 182 or the bluegrass, ding, da da ding, da da ding, da da ding, yeah. squirrel nut zippers or yeah. something really slow. Anyway, yeah. you get it. Um, yeah. So I heard this guy the other day, Swamp Dog, singing yes. synthetic uh, blues. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I think it's E. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who the artist. I. I. Yeah, I heard. He was on a I sound think, like a. He was, he was on like Peaky Blinders or something. Maybe I don't know. He had a soundtrack thing going on. Something where so right. it was really good. Oh, well, you know what there? it was? Is Lenny Kravitz's yeah. daughter? What's her name? Uh, Zoe Kravitz. Did you ever the high, uh -huh. high fidelity the thing that she had the. Yeah, I don't know. It, it was great. It was great. It got canceled, of course. Why does everything good get canceled? I mean, not everything good, but. How All about right. I'm dying up here? Did you see that about the LA comedians that Jim no. Carrey was? Oh, oh it's yeah. so good. Oh. I saw a little. I wasn't crazy about it. Oh, you didn't like it? No, I I didn't give it a fair shake. I gave it ten minutes, and I was like, oh, yeah. ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's yeah. No, bad. it's 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 really well done, you know. And I think that um, yeah, give it give it twenty minutes. I think you'll at least at least enough. Uh, you know what show that I loved? I think it was either HBO or Showtime, and it got canceled. Was Bobby? It was about cocaine and seventies music. It was the music label. Oh yeah, guy, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Bobby um, Carnival, Carnival, yeah, 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 Carnival. yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was great, and and everybody, and all my friends. I have friends like all my hipster friends were like, they were so upset because every time he'd do a line of blow, he'd go like, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, that's not how you react when you have a line of cocaine. And literally yeah. people like rock and roll friends of mine that were like rock yeah. and roll. I'm, I'm saving rock and roll. Cause I'm look, I look so rock and roll and like fuck new music and all that stuff killed this thing in social media because they didn't like the way the cocaine reactions were. That was so, it. That's what the cocaine that, killed. It. Yeah. Death by cocaine, you know, but a vinyl. 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 vinyl it was called. I yeah. really, I was shocked. That was, I was canceled. so excited Every for the second season. And Mick yeah. Jagger and, and and Scorsese producing. It's like, what happened? I think it was like yeah. money or like, you know, they couldn't pay the, maybe, I don't right. know. Sad, you know? Yeah. But, but despite that, there are so many great things in streaming. You know, I wish modern music was as good as modern, uh, uh, you know, streaming. Like really, yeah. I think I think there is, there are a lot of cool artists out there, but but for, you know, guys that play guitar, it's certainly not on the pop charts these days. I think like everything else, when you see Pod on TV, it kills me for 20 years. It was always like, dude, I'm so stoned. I'm the, the idiots where, as to me, I'm an intellectual with Pod. I feel like I turn into another. But same with cocaine. Of course, they're going to be like, wow, and over-exaggerate. Yeah. And, you know. yeah. Anyway. 
All right, I'm going to run well, through these things. It was probably just cut with a lot of speed. That's what, you know, that's what I said to him. I was like, well, they just said cheap shit. <laughs> Almond Brothers. <laughs> Almond Brothers? Oh, Almond oh Brothers? I thought we were what talking about cocaine. Hell yeah. No, nah, no, no. We're... Okay. Live at the Fillmore. Eat a peach. Yeah. Okay. Fillmore. I mean, guitar. Amazing record. The, the mesh of guitars on the Almond Brothers. It's uh, just like. Incredible. Such... Yeah, incredible. I was a little late. Did, did you know that that record was actually cut? Those performances on Live at the Fillmore were recorded over three nights, and the songs themselves were edited. So they would take the jam sections. Yeah. So the performances, wow. so that's how good they were, that the tempos were, they were so on the money, and they didn't play with a click track wow. or computers, you know what I mean? Like, they just yeah. played. So every one of the songs on that is is compiled of wow. different takes. Isn't that crazy? Right. I love it. Yeah. It's that's an good amazing producing. record, man. There was something I recorded back on 93.3 WMMR and in Philly, there was a Allman Brothers Live and more. And they were taught, they were being interviewed and the guy was like, you know, sometimes you come out here and you play clams. Clams are things when you screw up a note, but we always found a way to bring it back together and just make it all work. It was yeah. like such a nice thing. Yeah, um, a happy mistake, yeah. I don't know if you heard of this bone. It's called the Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones? <laughs> this band? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Oh, I mean, a lot yeah. of early blues. Oh God, man. Of course. I mean, you know, Mick. Still, I'm like, I was reading, I was reading the lyrics to Emotional Rescue today because I was, you know, you know, anything that I can nick, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab it, you know. But it, it I could see that, you doing that one because said, you can go high. Is there nothing I can say? Nothing I can do? Oh, that was good. Maybe you should do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, like there. He was the ability to 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 blend like sexuality with sort of a, 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 a um, uh, like a, a sensibility, you know, like his sensibility was it was incredible. It was it was sort of societal, like he could bring in this sort of rich man in society, you know. Mm -hmm. You're just a poor girl in a rich man's house, right? Like that line. You're like, what? You know, like, it's like, who would say that? You know, but yeah. stuff like that or like, you know, come on, girl, I'm going to make you a star. You know what I mean? Like those songs or, but then yeah. something like, uh, uh, something like uh, I shoot water rats. Like, you know, I mean, the, the, the idea of some of these songs like bitch and, and, um, uh, um, uh, you know, I don't know. I can't think of a stone, another Stones thing at the moment. But you know, uh, oh well, you know what I play when it's uh, Sympathy for the Devil. You know, I'll, I'll do, mm -hmm. I'll cover that. And you know, you know, Master in the Margarita. Well, you know, he was he was a red guy. You know, he was a well-read guy and a very yeah. interesting perspective on. Mm. Uh, you know, they weren't just baby baby songs. You know, rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown. What a what mess! A mess. It sounds it sounds in tatters. Yep. What I'm in shattered. Kind of Spilling all over Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah. The Dubai. Uh, okay, we're going to go faster. David Bowie. Oh, what do you got? I mean, the number one. Number one for right. David Bowie. It's always been like, I. Yeah. The only artist that I wrote a fan letter to, but I never mailed. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It was like this thick. I mean, as a kid growing up, every change that I had from, you know, puberty to. to, to Every year of high school, you're a different person. You have a different, you have different things, different philosophies. And college, you become this, and you kind it would just go from Ziggy to Aladdin Sane to, you know, Halloween Jack to the Thin White Duke. Like uh, it, it, wow. it related to me as growing up. Yeah, and you know, I, right. that wasn't. I don't think that was his intention. Maybe it was him growing up in a way. For him, yeah. it was characters, you know. And, yeah. and also, I got introduced to Bowie through the music. I didn't get introduced through the image, you know. So the sure. image to me was secondary. It was the music that, because it was well, so. Well, if you grew up on FM yeah. radio like you and I did, that's what we heard for. We, I, I right. probably was the same way. I didn't see a picture of David Bowie till later. Yeah, but, just one know. one picture on the album cover or whatever, but it wasn't like right. I went up and Googled all the shots, you know. So it was, there was something exclusive and, you know. Beautiful. So my first first day moving into college, which was a weird thing, I, I actually moved into a dorm in Center City, Philly, but that's another story. Um putting my stuff in the the, the uh, apartment next to me, the dorm room next to, next to me, cranking up. I couldn't tell what it was. It sounded like Bowie. The door opens, 
massive pot smoke comes out and this beautiful blonde haired woman looks at me in like a shirt and she's dancing to panic in Detroit. Oh yeah. And I was just that, that Come guitar. On. Fuck. I will never forget that image. And when I do a story oh, of Andrew yeah. Einhorn, that's, that's going to be in there. But, yeah. and now it's still my favorite Bowie song panic. It's just it's edgy. Amazing. And, yeah, right, so that, I mean, it's, yeah, it's I yeah I don't I don't know if, that, if is that song about the gas crisis I don't really know what that song's about but I do have oh my god I got this great book um, I have uh, wait I'll, I'll be right back keep talking Hold sure on. okay while we take this break let me remind you that you are watching on the horn with Andrew Einhorn this is our fifteenth show we're currently with. David. This Bowie. is one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen this book? No. Ashes to ashes, yeah, bunk so, to bunky. We so know this major. book is incredible. I w actually went to to see the Chris O'Leary that wrote it. I went to his his opening, and you'll see it's I got a bookmark in it, but it's any every Bowie song that you want to um, know, like how he he researched wow. every song. And wow. all the stuff that was written about every song, any type of um, anecdotes or story behind it or whatever. And it's just unbelievable. So this record goes from young Americans to the, from young Americans to uh, Black Star. Right. Uh -huh. But there's another one called Rebel Rebel, which is the companion to this. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. pretty thick. Right. Um, yeah. And Rebel Rebel goes from the beginning to young Americans. So. This has got great. I mean, there's all it's just it's unbelievable. You know, it's unbelievable. Wow. That seems awfully thick. I mean, if he's got 200 songs, I can't imagine more than a paragraph. You know, this oh, is no, not a girl like I met in three, East yeah. London. <laughs> there's like three <laughs> pages because it's not just what he said. It was what people said. And, and it was about the the sessions or stories about Tony Visconti. And, and you I know, see. like mm -hmm. um, that was like a, a highlight for me was I was doing this uh, this residency for five years in Tribeca at a place called Bell Rev. And um, I did, I, I had some incredible people show up and I'll tell you a couple of them in a minute, but the most incredible to me was Tony Visconti came and mm -hmm. he walked right up after my set and he's like, dude, I love your songs. And that to me was, that's as a songwriter, that's what you want to hear. I mean, he, he may know that, you know, that, that instead, usually people come up to me, they're like, oh, you got a great voice or, oh man, you play guitar so great. Or, you know, your band's incredible, you know? Uh, but Tony was like, yeah, man, I really, really like your songs, you know, really mm -hmm. great songwriting. And I was like, wow, mm -hmm. thank you. And, and he was, you know, knowledgeable enough to know, cause I threw in, there was some like junior Wells in there and there was some Lightning Hopkins and I threw in, you know, there was a couple of things that came up. Yeah, but like, yeah, he knew, like he knew, and and that was the biggest compliment of my life. My life, and it was my son's birthday, and there's mm. a picture of my son and I with with Tony. That's that's like will forever be cherished in my heart. Wow. Yeah. I would like to take this slight gap. I want to go to our third segment. We're three minutes shy of an hour, but that's fine. But uh, this is the last one, so we can 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 get this one in. Uh, so it, yeah. This one I called Pleased to Meet You because I had to give it a name. Uh, let's see what we got. Ah, oh, old and, Gibson. Uh, I'm playing this old guitar here from the 90s, actually, an old Gibson. And uh, I'm going to stop. I got a foot box. I just stop on this foot box, kind of like an old blues guy. And that's what I do, man. Strange magic. That's what it's all about. Mm. So let me please introduce myself. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Huh. My man, oh, well, then, taste. I let traps go through the door. Who got killed before they reach the bar? That's the big joke. I hope you guess my name. Woo! 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 It's coming. Ooh, ooh. 
Oh, oh yeah, Spada on the background vocals. <laughs> Thanks a lot, yeah. so ah, cool. I'm excited. I can't wait to share this with people. And people are gonna love Good. it, man. I love the way yeah. you really you know you pulled in all these different elements into it. Thanks, I nice, agree. Nice work. Nice work. Thank well you, you said much. you had a TV yeah. show, right? You had a TV show and you were doing like public access thing. Yeah, yeah. That was a while ago, but I made about a hundred shows. So I sort of self-taught myself shooting yeah. and editing. I mean this. Not, yeah. not that anybody could do this, but it was just with the iPhone. But there is a bit Great. of thinking, you know, yeah. getting people to talk is one thing. Getting different angles is another yeah. movement. I mean, it's nothing fancy, but I don't yeah. know. What is, you know, I have these different notes, but love of music. I, I feel like I didn't touch on. Deep down, you just must love music. Uh, was that always there? Is that going to always continue? Is it in your heart and soul? Partridge family, I think. <laughs> I think, it, you know, like watching that show when I was a little kid, I mean, man, that was the shit. I mean, Keith, Keith Partridge, you know, that did it for me. I, I But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, uh, well, my first musical kind of memories, I, I don't know if I, I have that for you right now, but, uh, right. but yeah, I mean, it always, there was always a guitar. I think I had a guitar, but there was a guitar in school or something. Like it was the guitar that drew me in. And yeah. and, and, and I, my dad, I, uh, the first musical thing actually is my father. So my dad used to put me to bed at night, and mm. he would sing me all these old folk like folk songs, kind of like Irish drinking songs. Wow. He would like uh, yeah. He was he was an amazing guy. He was big. He was yeah. six foot four and like two sixty. You know, he's a big, he was like a football player, my dad. He was a big, like a linebacker. He was built, really big guy. And um, and I remember he would come and tuck me in and he would sing with this beautiful, he had a beautiful voice, kind of a tenor, a gentle tenor. And um, he would sing me like, you know, to the tables down at Maury's, da -da 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 -da, like the Whiff and Poof song. And, mm -hmm. and uh, he would sing me, you know, uh, my Bonnie lies over the ocean. the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my um, Bonnie lies over the sea. Yeah. My father lies over my mother, and that's how they got little me. <laughs> Sorry, that's, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's good. You didn't tell me that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so about, he just taught me that stuff. You know, that was it, and that kind of got me singing. I think. When Irish eyes are smiling. Yeah. Uh, now that's unexpected to have your father tuck you in and give these beautiful it? Irish ballads. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice. It's one of my fondest I, memories. What about your mother? Anything on that yeah, side? She's, you know, kind of entertaining the guests. She used to have curry parties. Remember that? that was that a 70s thing? I don't know. Curry As an party, Indian like, food curry? Yeah, yeah. She had this this serving tray that had all these different, like, uh, what do you, like, accoutrement you could put on it, you know? And, like, so there would be, like, different spices, and then the curry would be in the middle, and then they'd mm -hmm. all sit around. It was like a, it was, it was like that. They had those in the, the cheese parties, the fondue parties, you know. But she sure, always, sure. she loved the curry. And I remember as a kid, just like, <laughs> oh, the, it was the curry she made. It was like the yellow curry that had a, it was really this robust aroma, you know. And mm -hmm. I can't tell you, it used to gross me out so much when I was a kid. And now, of course, I love curry. <laughs> but back then, yeah. I was, it was the smell. It was like, oh, this is terrible, yeah. you know. But yeah. it's good, you know. Yeah. Let me get my producer. Can we get some Indian delivery? Oh, hey, please. Yeah, that local yeah. place. Yeah, some naan bread, some pork, yeah. some uh, coconut. Oh God, I, I'm, uh, no. getting my, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> wow. I feel like uh, before I forget, and we're going to go to your other song because we can get to play that, where can people buy? I just I bought some stuff from you, but like oh, websites. You. Yeah. yeah. So everywhere, like, like if you want to buy stuff and you want to get like high quality download kind of thing, I would go to Bandcamp because you can do really high quality MP3s on Bandcamp. You can do uh -huh. wave files if you want to download the wave, like a CD quality file. Um, you can okay. get it on Bandcamp and it's all the same price, like whatever. If you want Og Vorbis, whatever that is, I don't know. You can get that. 
Um, okay. But yeah, you can so you can select your you know the bit, the bit rate and all that stuff, which is really cool. So they have really good quality, and uh, it's a cool website. And then of course iTunes, Apple, Spotify. I'm I'm big into streaming. I think it's you know it's a great way. Even though we don't make much money at it, I pref- I, sure. I, I'm totally into you adding it to your playlists and playing it over and over and over because even though it's point oh 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 five cents, you know if it, if, 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 <laughs> If you if you get a million streams, it's like five thousand bucks, you know. So yeah. you got to get a lot of streams to get any money out of Spotify. But hey, listen, you know, it's it's the 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 idea is it gets on playlist and it gets shared and people hear it and it turns another person on, it turns another person on. So that's yeah. good. So yeah, Spotify. And- so it's Strange Magic M A J I K. Uh-huh. There's um, Venmo, Strange Magic. If people want to de- make a donation or whatever, they can do that too. That's nice. That's always always nice in a Venmo. And do you list when you're going to play around town? Is it There's, on the? You, it's on the strangemagic.com. There's okay. uh, it, it, and I'm also uh, it feeds from Songkick. I think feeds into there, and also Bands in Town feeds into there. So if you're on Songkick or Bands in Town, you'll get an update. Yeah. Um, I think Bands in Town is pretty good about updating. Um, so the next show is October 31st, Halloween. No way. Um, Where, yeah. when, how? At Marshall Stack again. And okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to angle the band in. We're actually playing a private party in Long Island on the 24th on, on Saturday night, which I'm ex- okay. super excited about because the band gets to play. Um, yeah. And we just had that beautiful show in Long Island City at the Culture Lab. I don't know if you saw any of those pictures, but the first picture you put on was from that, actually, the the, the live okay. photo. Oh, fuck! I um, totally forgot. I was gonna yeah. run through the pictures and have you say this is this and this and this and this, but uh, oh, I don't well, know. Yeah, we can do that too. Um, but okay. uh, but um, yeah. So October thirty first is the next public show that you can come to, and it'll be at Marshall Stack, sixty six Rivington, which is Rivington and Allen Street in mm-hmm. Lower Manhattan. Yeah, it's a nice venue. All right, let's go to your uh, song because that oh, yeah. was. Uh, and tell me about. Can't remember to forget you. Like uh, this hot off the press. Is this the one that you released yesterday. Uh, yeah, this is what I released yesterday. It's uh, uh, so it was written during COVID. Um, I got really into this guitar player uh, called Cornell Dupree. Um, and I found a hot licks video on YouTube that you know you can Google. Um, and it there was a. There was a number of licks, and one of them was this, which is from a Tony Joe White song called uh, uh, oh, it's, um, it, oh, what is it called? The Tony Joe White song is amazing, and it's called Rainy Night in Georgia. So I don't know if you know that. It's actually... Um, and Rainy... we got to get it right. That's the night uh, that the lights went out in Georgia. Yeah, not that one. And it's not Midnight Train to Georgia. It's, it's <laughs> raining out in Georgia. Raining out in Georgia. Because it's raining all over the world. Yeah, it's, it, Brooke Benton was the artist that made it a hit. It's kind of a Memphis thing. Anyway, so Cornell Dupree played on that. He played with Aretha. He played with King Curtis. And he had all these different licks, you know, these... that kind of stuff. And he's just amazing with two part harmonies. And so anyway, this, this was kind of inspired by him and also just hanging out in New York city. It's a little out of tune, but I think it'll be all right. Here we go. So it's called can't remember to forget you. So many summers long ago I saw you hanging by the studio There was poetry in the way you moved There was reggaeton playing in the neighborhood Can't remember to forget you every day I know that you're not coming back There's no way you think I would have learned my lesson? Mm, I'm confessing it's the same old 
the same old. The sun was beating 89 degrees. Yeah, you put to shame all the wannabes. You had the style that could make a grown man feel like butter in the pan. Can't remember to forget you every day. I know that you ain't coming back. There's no way. Think I would have learned my lesson. Oh, I'm confessing it's the same old, same old. And it's the same old, same old Well, sometime love's a real fine Sometimes it's a trick of the mind Don't know if I can feel oh, what is real uh, Searching for some high deal Can't remember to forget you Every day, I know that you're not coming back. There's no way you think I would have learned my lesson. I'm confessing it's the same old, same old. Can't remember to forget you every day. You know that you ain't coming back. There's no way. You think I would have learned my lesson? And I'm confessing it's the same old, same old. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. oh, I'm confessing it's the same old, it's the same old. Beautiful. Nicely done. Thank you, man. Jesus. Thanks so much. The inflections, the highs to the lows, to the gravels, to the sing. That's Woo! that's an art. Yeah. You get you getting better with age? Oh yeah. Like <laughs> fine wine. Yeah. Do you, I, yeah, that's yeah. Because so voices change. Shit. Yeah. Age, meditation, you know breathing a lot of things like meditation i think opened me up to music wow. that really uh -huh. like, got me right in terms of i'm not that i'm you know I, I still have work to do sure but you know but nah meditation the, like the level of focus now from meditation is is, is mm -hmm. beyond anything i've ever been able to achieve in my you know younger life for i gotta start I meditating kind of yeah dude it's the best i mean it, it really is you know and it's not difficult you just get up in the morning just do it right when you wake up just try to really? focus on your breath for 20 minutes you know and it'll 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 come together but it when takes I wake time up in the morning, when i wake up in the morning like at cnn.com at all the horrific things that happen is that kind of the same just it reading kind of about programs your day you know i mean the first thing that you do yeah. in the morning as you wake up you know it's like that first 15 minutes or first 15 seconds really when you wake up is kind yeah. of how it's going to program your day so i think the most important thing is to get up like before you do anything like get up pee get your drink or whatever it is and then like sit down and just try to be quiet for 15 minutes quiet not laying in bed but actually sit in sure. a chair or comfortable yeah. lotus whatever you like and i have it, meditated you know? 
a little bit, but for me, it was like three, four, five in the afternoon felt like the right time. And I had to put an yeah. earplug and an eye mask. I needed complete silence and yeah. complete darkness. I almost leaned forward like a, this is the atheist Jew, like a Muslim praying. It just felt comfortable. Yeah. And I just, I did the thing where you count to six and you hold your breath and you try to right. just wipe out everything. Yeah. And yeah, it was breath. nice. Yeah. Well, you know, there's there's like all kinds of different teachers now that are great. You know, I love Joe Dispenza. He has a book called uh, uh, Becoming Supernatural that just blew my mind. He had uh, the previous book, You Are the Placebo, just completely opened me up. Um, you know, and then you've got the classic guys. I just found a book on the Bowie book list because I'm really into the Bowie book list called On Becoming, uh, on, on, on Having No Head by this yeah. guy, uh, D.E., what's his name? I forgot. And it, um, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, it's it's Eckhart Tolle for 1963, you know? So, because that concept of, of the power of now is such an old concept, you know? that we're And, and I think what it, Eckhart Tolle has repackaged it in a way that's very easy to understand for everybody, you know? And that's, that's great. That's what, it's like, it's like folk music, you know, it's like rewriting folk music. It's the wow. same kind of vibe, you know, it's like you're taking, taking those melodies and, and bringing them into a new, uh, dressing them up and with, with new clothes, you know. But the, um, the, uh, uh, the, I just like one of the things a friend of mine got me into this Wim Hof guy that, you know, so he does these breathing techniques in the cold showers. Mm. That's, I started the yeah. cold shower thing and yeah. I, fascinating. I mean, it's fascinating how your mind is much quicker and like, eh. You know, we're getting old, man. We gotta like figure out how to get, make it work. You know. Yeah. But for I me, ex ex exercise is exercise. huge. Yeah, I saw you on your I'm bike. I'm riding my I, bike a couple too. miles. I ride a bike yeah. everywhere. Right. Yeah. Bike, bike every bike and city bike all the time. It's just so easy, you know. Bike and good sleep. Good sleep eight hours. Good. A good, a good eight hours. Yeah. Have you tried um, mushroom tinctures? Do you know about that? This is the I'm self help not. portion of the broadcast here. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, no. If you if you check out uh, lion's mane tinctures before bed, you okay. like it, it, it. Supposedly increases your REM sleep thirty percent. Like your dreams go wow. up, and 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 when you're dreaming, you're actually sleeping. So that's a good thing. You want to dream more. Um, I'm writing this down. Say that one again. Oh, lion's lion's mane tincture. I'll send you some links. Lion's mane okay. tincture. Yeah. Uh, and okay. it's fa it's fascinating. Like thirty minutes before you go to bed, just take twenty minutes before you go to bed. Take it. Read your book. Crash out. And then boom, you know, it's great. I'd be remiss if I didn't just uh, a few people, because they're always saying in chat, of course, our good friend Astra, Astra in the right. house, Woo. Dee Dee Champagne, Dee Dee. my Dee Dee. friend Shelly Bush from Philly, Andrea yeah. Delmonico, Jim hey. Cox, hey. Michelle hey. Kaminer. Nice. Uh, Chewy Naughton. Ooh. I like that. I don't name. know who you are, but I like it. Michelle Cameter, Astra, 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 Dee Dee Champagne, Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. Uh, Molly King, our friend. Molly, is in, uh, that's amazing. She says, Daddy was a truck. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's when, when she and I met. She was going out with my friend Matt Horn. She, okay. She knows two horns. That one yeah. I told you about him, right? That, that, the other yeah. horn right there, right? Uh, <laughs> Einhorn and then Matt Horn. So that's funny. Did she ever tell you about Matt Horn? So that was like these like so. two hippie rock and roll kids in New York City when I first moved here, and he and I started. I met him at a party, and I walked up to him. I was like, "Are you are you a musician?" Because he looked like such a rock star. He literally looked like uh, he looked like like he was in the Small Faces, you know, but not in a in a put on way. Like a lot of the East Village rockers really dress it out, and then yep. you find out that they play guitar, but they're not that great. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then, like this kid <laughs> could play like a bunch of instruments and just wore like dungarees or whatever. And it was like the real deal, you know? So he's, he's still around. I don't know where he is these days, but he, he plays with a guy called Don, Don Piper now. That's amazing. Uh, okay. Songwriter Don Piper was around in the nineties and then continues to play and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, Molly, we love Molly and Molly sang backups on raised on rock and roll and living the um, song called listening to Leon on uh, both on raised on rock and roll record. And she's amazing, okay. amazing voice. Yeah, Lotus you know, 33, you know, Molly and Henry. Oh man, I know Henry, <laughs> yeah, Lotus 33, I remember those shows. P3. Um, Kilsey Coriel and my boy Larry Leonard, just saying hi to those two too. So I appreciate y'all looking Ooh. and chatting in. A lot of optimism, a lot of beautiful hearts and smiley faces and just- Oh uh, really? Yeah. I gotta tune yeah. in, man. I am not going to get your reaction. Just I'm just gonna read these because I wrote them down. It makes okay. me look good. Uh, Bowie Hendricks. Hendrix. Mozart. 
Very Mozart, nice. yes, Van Halen. I mean, R.I.P. Eddie. Tom in '81, open for the Stones. A band uh -huh. called the Doors. All right, <laughs> <laughs> All right I almost fell over. That was That's my right. Van Halen kick. Wow. Yeah. I fucking grew up. Uh, just Van Halen to me, ACDC, Van Halen, The Doors, all the same era, thanks yeah. to you, Larry Leonard, in the back of his uh, convertible Buick. And it was, um, yeah, just Jamie is crying and. Um, hot for teacher, but it's sexist crap, for really. You know, it's sexist crap. We can't really accept yeah. that stuff. It's not. But the guitar. Oh, really? We can't. Oh, shit. No, I'm okay. Not, I, don't, I don't buy that. I don't buy yeah. that. It's rock and roll, man. But yeah, the, yeah. You know, it was cock rock, but it was, it was, you know, Van Halen was, was, Eddie was unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, there's little just, guitars that just, oh, yeah. they made nice music. I didn't yeah. know that cock rock. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know cock that one? Rock. No, I never heard that before, but I'm going to use it. Yeah. So Michelle Kaminer. All right. Um, let's see. Um, the doors. Oh, yeah. Jim. Um, I'm only bringing you two because that, that woman that was interviewed yeah. earlier said, she brought out the verve, which yeah. I, thought was, I insulted her. I was like, the verve, you must be older than 35. And she went, no, I'm not. I was like, oh, <laughs> sorry. She's actually uh, directing and starring in my new video called Hazy Jane, which is um, Hazy Jane is from the 2020 record. And it's just been this kind of epic video production that she's been working on. And for, for the last, I don't know, what and a half or two months. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, that has a bit on 2020, probably Hazy Jane has a bit of that verve kind of thing i loved the verve in the 90s you know um i used to play with a lot more effects and 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 looping and stuff like that in the 90s and i was in a band called yeah. Rover, you know and we were very psychedelic rock and um it was all about creating like a soundscape of kind of these loops mm. and it was and it was yeah. I guess it was similar like in the way like i love the verve the drummer is incredible like he just he's a very english drummer and has a solid groove and then the um the uh, Richard Ashcroft is a, a you know beautiful storyteller, great song, amazing, beautiful voice, and a great songwriter. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nick McCabe, the guitar player, was like totally inspired by him in many ways. Yeah, yeah. So it comes, you know, the, all the influences. It all kind of like she said, you know, it, there's a lot of influences there. You know, I, I don't know what it's, it's not like I'm trying to do, be, you know, Americana. I've tried yeah. uh, Race on Rock and Roll was an attempt to make an Americana record, but I, I'm like, dude, I can't. I'm like, I get, I get bored with genres. I just want to go, you know. I want to, I want to go where the band's yeah. going to go, or where the, where my head's going to go. Yeah, you know. Uh, I wrote down Brownie McGee. I'm not sure why he might have. You know that name, Brownie? Yeah, McGee? but not. It's not for. Not in my. It's not in. Finally, my radar. good. Not on my radar. Yeah, yeah. But but Johnny I cash. Oh yeah. Cash. I walked the line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both prison. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Roxy Music. I wrote down Roxy oh, Music yeah. in one of your bios. Yeah. Somebody said that you were mixing Roxy Music with uh, something else. Right. Probably Bowie or, or Hendrix or something. Yes, I love Roxy. Um, absolutely, man. I mean, I have the same birthday as Brian Eno. He's like the one famous person on my birthday, you know. <laughs> and um, but he's a he's a he was the you know the his. His con contribution to to Roxy was interesting in a in a in a spacious like a uh, spatial kind of way. I think he was a big influence on them in that sense. But he wasn't really a musician, you know. And the, the other guys mm. at Roxy, like Brian Ferry, is a consummate singer and and was an art student and a great lyricist. And I think there's, you know, um, what's it called? This Jungle Life record, the the one where they're in the green, where they're they're in the. It's that record to me is just incredible. I have it on vinyl over there somewhere. It's, but that like. Um, the thrill of it all. That song is yeah. just, is it, it, so. There's a lot of the thrill of it all, and then um, uh, uh, you know any of the songs he wrote about Jerry Hall or that's yeah. You know, it, it, there's all his whole romance between you know he, he got dumped. Jerry Hall dumped him for Mick Jagger, so you can imagine how huh. that felt. He wrote some good songs with that one. Um, but yeah, yeah, he, Roxy, love Roxy. He, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, you know, I got to see Stevie open for Jeff Beck, and um, the I wasn't. I love Stevie's guitar playing because I I learned about him from Let's Dance. It was Let's Dance and like China Girl, and that's Stevie, you know, on the Let's Dance record. And Bowie, for me, for me, Bowie discovered Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I don't I know, know that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was not like a. If you were in the blues scene or you knew. Texas music scene, you knew who Stevie was way before Let's Dance, but I think Let's Dance was like 83, 
something like that. No, I don't know. Hey, Owen, what year was Let's Dance? <laughs> My son knows. No, it was, I don't think it was 84. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see the boy. Let's see uh, the yeah. dude. Hey, Owen, come here. Yeah, I want to see yeah, if he yeah, looks like here. his dad. You're getting you're getting requested on camera here. Hurry up. Yeah. Watch out. I'll have him play a song. Yeah, he's much cooler. Owen? There much he is. cooler? Yeah. <laughs> stick, stick your head in there. <laughs> Damn, you're right. Oh, my God. He's almost a spitting image of you. Wait, that's it? Don't go away. Why don't you harmonize? Sing us a bar. Do some air drums. Oh, I want something. Yeah, you can sit. Find Ohio. There's a, there's a video of us doing Ohio. Here, come over here. Does he sing also? Owen, you sing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah he sings. He's got a whole record. I'll send it to you. It, he hasn't released it yet. I want something that's 48 seconds, the two of you. I don't care what it is. Just give me something. Ten soldiers and Nixon's coming. We're finally on our own. This summer, this summer I hear right the drumming. Hear drumming. <laughs> We're dead oh. in Ohio. Gotta get down oh. to it. Soldiers, Soldiers are cutting us down. All right, well, you're Should have been long ago. No, uh, sorry. Come on, Owen, you pick it. I need something. <laughs> he can't hear. He can't oh. hear. I got the headphones on. Oh, just tell I want to hear his right. voice. I want to hear you guys talk about the good looks, man. Just let, let him in it for right. the good looks. He looks, you know, Damn. We'll, we'll get our audience like a little younger now. All, so. all right. I like his aura. Just, just the smile, the eyes. He just looks like a good kid. You've yeah, done well, he's son. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. Meet Andrew. That's Andrew. Hey, man. What's up? Hey, howdy. Thanks ask for uh, letting your dad. Uh, ask him how he's loving that virtual schooling. How you loving that virtual schooling, Owen? Um, not it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we see his career going? Is it drums, guitar, singing? Is he gonna follow in dad's footsteps? What's gonna happen? You're gonna go drums, guitar, singing. Where's your career going? Are you following in my footsteps? Or? Doing it all, I think. That's great. Great. Well, on that all. note, David, what what what's gonna happen the rest of your life? Your kids, your wife, New York City. I need a summary of like what happens from here. Where do we go? Uh, Where are you going? Stay healthy, man. Stay healthy. Stay he healthy and happy. I mean, that's number one. You know, we're sticking it out in New York, though. We're not, we're not running away from it. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're it's, it's, you know, I think, uh, you know, try to respect people and spread the love and stay healthy. Keep up your immunity, and you know, wear a mask when you're inside and you know, close to people and all that stuff. I think yeah. that's it. I mean, I don't think anybody really knows where it's going right now, where anything's going. You know, who knows? You know. I don't, yeah. I don't even know, you know, I think as a musician, I think video is going to become more important, I guess, you know, hmm. and the virtual tip jar stuff. Uh -huh. um, when I did, um, uh, when I did w during, during the heavy lockdown phase, I did a bunch of things on my Instagram. You can see that, um, all right, the kids out, um, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, um, uh, the, you know, that, that, people were very responsive on which was really nice yeah. you know, like a few hundred people would tune in or whatever that those are great i got to do some more of those um i tend yeah. to, like to just i have a studio that i go to and i i just go in there and i i tend to want to like just i dial it in you know and and record and, and I, I prefer to put out records but i know people really like the the live little ditties as well so i have to do more of that but i think that as a as a performer i think that's kind of where music is in the short term is going you know it's like more live performance online and videos and and then like what we started at marshall stack of playing in the windows and i think more if more bars were open to musicians playing in their windows i think mm. we'd have a lot more live music in the city you know yeah so, i've seen it in various places tribeca right. east village uh do you know the pink louds this band yeah that kind of, of course around? Pink louds. yeah 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 she's great <laughs> She's great. She's like, um, she's playing always in Tompkins Square Park. So she's created always, a whole yeah. like little thing going on there, which is which is killer. My son and his band, the Employees, they're called. They're uh -huh. playing. They're, they're they're from Beacon High School, and they've been playing in the park uh, at Beacon at um, Tompkins Square. Of course, the cops oh, nice. came when they played. So wow. it's, you got to play early. Not too much amplification. You know, okay. people people will complain in the neighborhood. God forbid. Yeah, you know, a little live music, but. You know, knock on wood, it's been good at Marshall Stack. We haven't had too many complaints, and and um, uh, I, you know, it, it's 
it's palpable live music, how it affects people. And that's the common thread in every conversation after I play is that um, one person said to me, it was like having sex for the first time, you know, and that that idea of coming back to live music after being deprived of it for so long, it really, she was like, that's how she said it, you know? But everybody yeah. said, I forgot, like, I've been missing live music so, so much, and this is just, thank you so much, and it's, so, you know, if, that's, if, you know, that's the intention, right? It was like to try to, you know, write a song or to play, perform for people and, and to inspire them in some way, you know, and, and this is, this has been a way to do that, that um, I feel like if more bars would get behind it, especially like none of the music venues are doing any kind of live music outside. They need to. The Marshall yeah, State didn't even a- have live music before we started this. We turned a, we turned a regular like dive beer bar, you know, craft beer bar place into a music venue now. And now we're in closets. Is Irving Plaza still around? I mean, mm. you know, it's just you got to you got to think out of the box. You can't be like, well, yeah, we're on stage and we're going to get all this PA equipment. And you, it's, it, you know, a musicians, it's it's it, it, they don't have the, the luxury of, you know, they're going to be on a one guitar or mi- maybe a microphone. You know, it's 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 pretty raw. You know, you saw what I'm doing there. I'm stomping on a box. Yeah. I don't even have my drummer, you know, so. It's it's you got to just react, you know, that's that's what these times are about. It's like innovate, um, stay positive and and, uh, stay healthy and do your thing. I think that's a perfect place to uh, end. It was a beautiful statement. So I really appreciate your time, your energy, your musical prowess. I wish we were. I wish we were recording that because those two songs just in my ears were melting. It was like every chord, every inflection. It's had. Yeah, that's great to hear, man. Well, it's we got it. We can we're we're archiving it, right? Where people can yeah re- restream it and stuff. Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna play one of your songs. That's got a. We didn't talk about the pictures, but it's basically you out and about performing either solo or with your band. So. Oh great! Thank you. Yeah. Brother. All right. All right. Thanks yeah. for having Thanks. me. Thanks. Thank Adam. you. Blame it on society.